Hello, Simon Jacobson here, and welcome to another episode of Meaningful Live. Can you heal after betrayal? A 60-day journey. One of the most devastating experiences in life is when you feel betrayed, whether it's an infidelity in marriage, in a relationship, whether it's a friend who you trusted and broke a promise or revealed a confidence, a form of breach. I mean, the very many different types of betrayals that we unfortunately experience in life. Some of us feel betrayed by God. And some of us feel betrayed by ourselves, that we've betrayed our own aspirations and dreams. However, it manifests, betrayal is a schism, is the severing of a connection. And that is always very difficult to handle. Can one actually heal from that? Can we repair? Can we improve? Can we rebuild after something was broken? In many ways, the answer to this question carries the real destiny of your life. Because if, God forbid, the answer is no, then in life we are all going to go through some form of betrayal, some form of loss. And if nothing can be done about it, then okay, so be it. I don't want to call it damaged goods, but there's only one arrow going forward, and you do your best with the wounds and scars. Just like, God forbid, if a person loses a part of their body, God forbid, a limb. In most cases, they don't, they don't regrow. On the other hand, if one can actually build after a break, after some form of destruction, and we have the hope and the confidence that we can do so, that turns us into a completely different type of entities. It means that no matter what comes our way, we can handle it. And not only can we repair, we can make it even stronger. This lies at the heart of so much of psychology and so many books and therapies and thought leaders and different schools of thought that have tackled this very question. I would like to pose it in the context of looking at things from two perspectives the materialistic perspective and the spiritualistic perspective. In other words, when you look at things in the here and now, on a level of the material universe, time and space, we all know, is limited with its parameters. Space in its way, and time flows forward. We don't go backwards. If you, can, if you look at things that way, so everything in life is temporary, everything is impermanent, and therefore, the experiences we have, whether the joys or the negative things, are there for that moment. And then we either move on, but we don't have any continuum, any longer narrative. When you look at things from the spiritual, through the spiritual lens and eyes, everything is part of a larger narrative. So every twist and turn in life, every forward progress and good activities, joyous events, as well as tragic ones, are part of a larger narrative, then there's no such thing as this is it, and you've reached a dead end, or you've had a joyous moment, but then you move on. Things have a continuum. They're always in flux. It's constant movement. And when you see it that way, then it's a journey. And a journey has a whole different perspective on life. That way we never get trapped no matter what happens in our lives, we don't get trapped in the moment. And this applies also to the issue of betrayal. Now, of course, there are betrayals we've seen that have destroyed marriages, destroyed relationships, destroyed individuals who could not deal with it, completely overwhelmed by this uh, breach, by this betrayal, by the loss of trust. When children in their homes grow up in, in environments that are dysfunctional, and repeatedly 
their trust is betrayed, what do you think happens? You grow into an adult that is cynical, definitely not trusting, always wary, always second-guessing yourself and others, and very difficult to build lasting relationships. And I use the word lasting. Yes, you can have short-term relationships, but trust isn't there. The trust has been destroyed. However, when you see it in the larger narrative, and especially when there's a connection between two entities where that trust was betrayed, the question is, can you dig deeper and find a place where you can rebuild that trust? And as I said before, therein lies the secret to most of life's challenges. Now, the reason I'm speaking about it now, which is really relevant all year round, is because we're in a very special period now. We are a few weeks before the Jewish New Year. As a result of the lack of finding spiritual relevance in these high holidays for so many people, I produced a book 15 years ago called 60 Days, A Spiritual Guide to the High Holidays. Exactly that, a journey. But it's a journey of this story of love, betrayal, and reconciliation. And the message, the main underlying message is that not to take betrayal lightly, but when you dig deeper, you can find a place that preceded the betrayal, and when you access that, then the relationship becomes indestructible. And it's based on a biblical story. The biblical story that at Sinai, when the Jewish people received the Torah, which clearly stated in the second of the Ten Commandments, do not build false gods, do not betray me and find another relationship outside of our sacred one. So, well, 39 days later, the people did exactly that. They built a golden calf, famous golden calf. Some people know it from the movie, The Ten Commandments. Others know it from the Bible. It's one of the classic stories. But there's the other part of the story that's not so well known. What happens next after this betrayal? So the great Moses marches back up on the mountain and begs God for forgiveness for the people. And God, of course, says, one second, they're the ones that hurt themselves. I didn't do this to them. They separated from me. They broke away from me. They cheated on me. What do you want me to do? Speak to them. From my point of view, I've given up on them. Start a new people, start a new nation. But Moses would not take no for an answer. Now this isn't just some biblical story. It carries in it one of the most important lessons you'll ever hear. What happens? Another 40 days Moses begs and prays and beseeches to no avail. Or at least he wasn't aware of any results because God refused him. Then he went up another 40 days. So we have now three sets of 40 days. 40 days when he receives the law, the Torah, the Bible, Second 40 days when he's begging God, but he's not successful. And the third 40 days, the period we are in right now, he finally prevails, returns on Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year, because he gained hope. It's the birth of hope, the birth of forgiveness, that even after the betrayal and after the infidelity, he was able to find a way to a deeper place, telling God, yes, I know you created a system of cause and effect, but I know you love the people and they love you. And as much as the betrayal is so painful, but there's a deeper connection. Let's access that. We all need to be accountable. We're not denying that. This is like just forgive and forget. No, we don't forget. We understand. But I need you to give me hope because human beings are flawed and no person is perfect. I need hope. I need to be able to say you can, there is forgiveness in this world. But forgiveness with accountability. And God finally prevails. And in Yom Kippur night, we actually state right after Kol Nidre, the famous prayer, we say three times that God responded to Moses, I have forgiven them as you've spoken. The first time in history, a man stood up to God and was able to change the course of destiny. That even after betrayal, there's hope. Now, what, is the, what do we learn from that? That's what true love is about. Now, are there situations where a betrayal 
reveals that there was no true love in the first place? It's possible. But I'm, of course, speaking about a situation where there is love. And there is a connection, like between parent and child. And that's never really severed. It's severed on an outer level. But think of it like a stroke. A stroke, God forbid, can block passages, but we know the neurons and the neural passageways can develop new paths because the connection fundamentally was never severed. The same is here. We have the capacity to dig deeper and find something within ourselves and within the loved one or within whoever it is that you betrayed or whatever it is that you betrayed to find that deeper connection. And that's what makes us so powerful. What do they say? They say to, forg- to, to err is human, to forgive is divine. Yes, we all can err. But what we have, even deeper than that, is the ability to forgive. And again, forgiveness does not mean you overlook. It means you've dug deeper and you've reached in a deeper place. But sometimes our pride gets in the way. We get trapped in our own habits. And we're not, we refuse to really try hard enough. But when we do, magic can happen. I've seen this with my own eyes many, many times. I've seen situations, unfortunately, that a betrayal led to complete destruction, and that was that. But I've also seen that with a little humility and accountability and honesty and sincerity and integrity, a human being has that capacity. You see, because we have a soul. If we were just a black and white machine, so fine, the machine breaks down. Maybe you can replace a part or two, but at some point it'll erode, some point it'll just... To deteriorate and perish. But we're not a machine. A human being has a soul. And a soul is a mysterious entity. It's hard to, it's not tangible. We can't put our finger on it. Can a soul truly sustain a wound that is, that is unhealable? The answer is no. Because the soul does, it defies the wounds and the scars as well as the benefits of this universe. What I mean by that is that, for example, you can cut somebody and have a small cut on their, on their hand. That doesn't mean that the person fundamentally has been hurt. It's on a surface level. Sometimes it's deeper than surface. So though the soul can be hurt in the sense we feel pain, we feel hurt, and obviously you have to be alive to feel that pain, but the soul itself has deeper reservoirs that when you access them, you can reach and draw forth deeper resources. Think of sleep. You know, a person goes through a day, wear and tear, struggle, toil, then they're exhausted, you fall asleep. What happens during sleep? That body that was so tired gets refreshed. How do we explain that? Because we have an energy source within us. Call it a soul, call it energy, call it whatever you like to call it. And it gets recharged, like recharged batteries, reinvigorated. And here we are, we wake up in the morning, hopefully with a good sleep, and you're refreshed and you can go another day, sometimes a little longer than a day. That's on a very physical level. The same is emotionally and psychologically. That even though we can be emotionally hurt, drained, and psychologically demoralized due to a betrayal, due to a breach of trust, due to the other schisms that may happen in our lives. So if you leave it as is, yes, it's going to be very difficult to repair. But if you allow yourself to go deeper into the soul's reservoirs, you can access energy that can bring that healing. Now, of course, it always takes two to tango, which means you have to be accountable. The person who's done the betraying has to be ready for that. And the person who's been betrayed has to be receptive. If you don't have that, that you're just living by the rules of engagement that we're the here and now. What we're talking about is accessing something deeper. Can it be done? Absolutely. Sometimes we need the help of a third party, a mentor, someone that we can talk to, who can listen to both parties, who's sensitive, someone you can trust. But it's not easy. Trust betrayed is a very difficult thing to mend. Because the, the very first principle is i guilty until proven innocent. I don't trust anymore. How will I know that it won't happen again? How do I know that, I, that this person is not going to lie? How do I know I won't be hurt? So it's not an easy thing to deal with. 
That is why it behooves and it's incumbent upon the person who's done the betraying to really work hard. And even then, you'll always need a little leap. But there's a thing called sincerity. And words from the heart enter the heart. If you're in a situation like this, where you've betrayed someone and you want to regain their trust, it's not just, please, let me try again, let's try again, give me another chance. No, no, those, those are hollow words. Some people will fall for it because they're desperate or they're needy and they like to believe that you will change. But it takes a lot more than that. It took 80 days for Moses. And Moses was a sincere man. He wasn't just saying words. Now, he wasn't guilty per se. He wasn't there when it happened. But he took the responsibility as a leader. So it requires a real deep soul searching. And there's nothing wrong with that. I look at the world of recovery, the world of healing, people who've gone through horrible situations, addictions of all sorts, drugs, alcohol, sex, gambling. And you see something very beautiful at the other end, that when they come to the healing stage and the recovery stage, there's something very refined, a humility that has entered, a deep honesty. And I find that to trust those people are the easiest people to trust than those that did not go through that fire. Can they fall? Of course, every person can fall. But when you go through something and you come out, I'm not saying you remain there, but you have struggled. There's something that happens to you that gives you a strength that's indestructible. Again, people can fail. And even after Moses gained forgiveness and regained the trust beyond the, after the betrayal, doesn't mean it was all over. There are plenty of other transgressions and problems. But nevertheless, a connection was made. And when you look in that person's eyes, you know we have been through something that was very painful, but we've come out. The only way out is through, and we've become stronger in the process. Now, I, would, I wouldn't say this if I didn't see it with my own eyes, because I myself could be skeptical. Who says it sounds so romantic and nice, but it's absolutely doable. But that's why it's critical to have accountability. Remember, love, trust, is not built on perfection. It's built on accountability. Perfection is an illusion. Accountability means that when I make a mistake, I'll be honest and I'll be straightforward about it. Now, what gets in the way? Our own pride, our own egos, our own insecurity blocks us so often from accessing that. And we just just say, give me another chance, and we're just... You know, just, I just want to get what I want. You're not ready, re- really ready to grow. That's why I go back to the people who've been humbled, who've hit rock bottom, and have learned to grow. There's such uh, purity there. Now, I don't wish upon anyone to have to go through that. But whenever I speak to people like that, they always tell me I would not want it another way. It taught me things I would not want another way. It's hard for me to understand, to be honest. But I do understand that emotionally it's hard for me to relate to because they've come to a point of acceptance of their own very flaws and they've seen them. When you see your uglier side, it can be very, very difficult. But it makes you stronger because you see I can get beyond it and I can grow through it and I can, I can develop relationships. When you hear those stories of reconciliation, it brings tears to your eyes. One of the reasons, because it's not so common, but it's absolutely doable. So I invite you in this journey. You can check it out online. We have 60 days. It's a book that many people follow as a journey. But we also have a daily email, and we have a podcast. And check it out. Go to MeaningfulLife.com, 60 days. Search for the word 60 days. A spiritual guide to the high holidays. It's a journey. So my dear friends... The journey is a really beautiful journey. But like every journey, it has its twists and turns, ups and downs. But above all, you know how to navigate. When you know how to navigate, no matter what comes your way, whatever storm will come your way, one that you've created or one that was created by someone else that's imposed upon you, nothing can stop us. Just a matter of navigating. Like a good swimmer, sometimes you fast, you go fast, forward thrust, full speed ahead, and sometimes you have to float and go with the tide. 
Every stage of this journey has the particular, the, the particular way of how to navigate through that stage. And when we navigate properly, the storms themselves and the setbacks become catalysts that catapult us like a springboard to greater heights. So let's join this revolution, join this journey, especially in this period of time. Time is energy. May we all be blessed to have the least amount of setbacks, the least amount of betrayals, hopefully none at all. But even when it comes your way, see it as an opportunity. Yes, let the pain seep through you. Do not ignore that. You're entitled to be upset. As a matter of fact, that's the nature of pain. Pain is a result of something going went wrong. So it's fine to have pain, fine. I'd rather not have it, but it's healthy to have it rather than repress it. But then let the pain and the grief feed and nourish the next stage of your life where you come out on the other end greater and stronger and hopefully can rebuild something greater than it was in the first place. This is the story of our lives, the story of this time of the year. Everyone be blessed. Look forward to see you again. Please share, like, subscribe. Please, I would love to hear from you. Any feedback, comments, questions, suggestions. And the main thing is that we should all become the strongest and greatest people we possibly can be. Everyone have a very blessed month, a blessed year. And I'll see you again very shortly. Be well.